our goal, our goal tonight, because we did leave late, we did leave at like four o'clock, is to get to Seven Bridge, which is the bridge between uh, England and Wales, and then sleep on the Welsh side. And so yeah, that's what we're gonna do for our first night. Night one was interesting. <laughs> so we arrived at the spot last night. None of our rear lights were working as we were backing into the space. So we called the mechanic, he arrived at like midnight. He's here for maybe half an hour, 40 minutes. And he's of the opinion that we have a grounding problem somewhere between the fuse and the lights, which he couldn't fix last night. So now we've spent you know, half an hour this morning trying to find a garage nearby that will take the van and hopefully have a look at the electrics for us and hopefully, fingers crossed, fix it so we can get back on the road. Currently in uh, a car park now where we stayed last night waiting for the recovery truck to come and pick us up and take us 10 minutes down the road to a mechanic. So that's what we're waiting for now. We'll see how today progresses. With Mr. Ellis, please. You are, yeah. Good morning, Mr. Ellis. It's Sarah calling from the AA. Oh, yeah. Just to let you know, we send in one of our local garaging partners, Caldy Coast Fleet Maintenance, who will assist on our behalf. Okay. And they'll be with you by about 11 50. Okay, cool. All right, then. Thank you. We are just waiting now for the tow truck to come bring us to the uh, car shop which is in Chesto which is like 10-15 minutes away. It's kind of frustrating because the van drives fine, it's just the back lights which it's technically illegal to drive without the back lights which I actually didn't know that until last night. So uh, yeah now we can't drive it which is frustrating because we're waiting for like an hour and a half for the tow truck and it's literally 15 minutes away and we technically could drive ourselves but we're doing it right it's fine it's all good so we're waiting for that uh the plan and the ultimate like positive thinking goal is that we'll get there they'll look at it they'll say yeah it'll take a couple hours and then we have packed a little day bag and we're gonna go enjoy chesto is it chesto am i saying it right yeah so. Chep Stow, sorry. And apparently that's a super cute little town with like a castle and some ruins and some little shops and stuff. So hopefully, if it only takes a couple hours, we'll just walk around that town and explore and then the van will be ready, question mark. Cross your fingers for us, please. Guys, he's here. The tow truck is here. Yeah, yeah. Right, here we go. I'll drop it off to, into the garage, okay. then you can have a chat with them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then if you want, I can drop you into Chepstow Town <gasps> Centre because it's quite a little bit of a lick. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you. Welcome to Chepstow. We've been in Wales for like 12 hours, not even, and half of that time was spent sleeping. So we've literally just gotten here. We've spoken to two men in the car park, uh, the mechanic, the driver for the truck, a couple people at the garage, and now 
a server at the restaurant we are eating at. And I just have to say, Welsh people are so friendly. I feel like I'm in the UK, Canada. Like, I, and I didn't even know this was like a thing. And then I asked Sean and he was like, oh yeah, 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 for sure. And no disrespect to people who are from England because I love English people. But I just feel like it's like the British version of like the friendliest people ever. Like I feel like Welsh is the Canada to England's America. No offense to the United States or England, but where Sean and I are from is are both pretty bomb. And I really love it here so far. Just to give you guys a little update about what's going on, we are currently in Chepstow still. It's four o'clock now, and the van has been at the mechanic since about what, 11, 11.30? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, maybe noon-ish, around then. So what we've done since we dropped the van off, they said that they would have a look uh, and see if they could fix the problem. They also said that if we haven't heard back by them, haven't heard back from them by five, that we should call them because obviously the van is there and we need somewhere to sleep. And she said that she would ask her boss if we could sleep in the van in their car park, basically, because it's not it's not in the garage, like it's, there's like a yard outside of the garage. So that might happen tonight, but we're just waiting to hear back. So what we did, we walked into the city center of Chepstow. Is this a city or a town? Town. I don't know. town, I think it's city, town, and then village in order of like big versus small. Anyways, we walked around, we had some amazing massive burgers at this place called, I think it was called Old Boat. It was right by the water, super pretty. Did that and then we went to check out the castle, which was super cool, it's like a ruin type castle. And now we're just walking around the city center. And just, Waiting to call again in an hour. Yeah, we'll call them in an hour. If they can't fix it, then obviously we have to go home. If it's gonna take like four to five days to fix it, we'll probably go home. If they can get it done by tomorrow, even tomorrow night, yeah. we'll probably stay here. The only problem is our plan was to go to London in two days time because I have some training and then I have a call back. Uh, and so I need to be in London for those two days regardless of whether the van is working or not. So if the van is not working, I need to find an alternate option, maybe with the train again. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, so now we're just chilling. Just waiting, hoping for good news. Yeah. So I actually didn't even know this was here. We just like happened upon it. Sean did, but he forgot. So as you can see by the sign here, this is the border between England and Wales. Now I'm in Wales, now I'm in England. Now he carried out a bit of investigation and there was no earth going to the rear light. What he's done is he's added additional uh, rear earth points okay. and then fitted the new rear side light bulbs as well. Amazing. So that's all working now. Um, now, there's multiple canvas bolts that are stored in the vehicle. Okay. Um, and then it comes up on the dash saying canvas failures and dash panel with the flash in. Okay. Now, what that's down to is the aftermarket stereo that's fitted. Uh huh. So, the only way to rec uh, rectify it basically is he disconnected the stereo and then reconnected the stereo. Um, and then he's just advised that if the flashing does occur, so if it carries on, then the stereo has to be left out. It's all working, it's just so we're having a bath at the moment. Oh, so, amazing, yeah. thanks. Yay! Our van is fixed and it's all because Sean tried to be too fancy with the radio system. <laughs> I'll fix it, don't worry. Hey, uh... Hello, how are you? Oh, Good, we're so happy. <laughs> but it's dead now. Oh, yes. <laughs> so all the errors, like the oil error, everything, it was all from this one problem. So all of that um, flashing then and everything there is all in to do with your stereo then. So it being okay. an aftermarket stereo. Thank, Thank you. you so much. No problem. Bye. 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 There's Snoopy. Oh, they even gave him a wash, gave him a bath. Look how clean he looks. Oh, yes. You happy? Let's see what happens. That ended up not delaying us too much in the end. I'm ready. 
all Kenwood's fault. That's it, they've reset the radio. Oh, yeah. Oh. On the road again. 20 meters. Can't wait to get on the road again. Oh, no <gasps> wow. That was expensive, but it did the job, didn't it? So we are on the road again, and right before we left, we were trying to figure out where we wanted to go next. Um, obviously, just because we left later because the van wasn't ready, and then with our day of <laughs> mechanical work, our schedule and our basic plan has shifted again, which is fine. That's kind of the cool thing about having the van is you can do that. So we only have a day and a half left in Wales before we have to head to London for two days for some auditions that I have. Um, so what we're gonna do is we don't wanna go too far north. So we are going to Abervan tomorrow. Well, that's where we're heading right now. We're gonna sleep near Abervan. For those of you who don't know, if you watch The Crown, if you remember, there is a town in Wales where it's like a coal mining town and there's like a big avalanche and it like killed like a bunch of people. It, it did an episode of The Crown, I think, in the second season. That's Abervan. So we're gonna go there. I, from what I understand, there seems to be like a memorial and like a little museum and just like a place that you can honor those people. So we're gonna go see that. And then depending on how long that takes, then we'll probably head to Cardiff because Cardiff is just directly south of Abervan. So that is our general plan. Probably sleep in Cardiff tomorrow night, but that might change again. So that's where we're heading now. And uh, we'll see you when we get to Abervan. We are driving to our park up for the night and it is way up on this hill and we are just surrounded by green mountains. It's actually pretty dark out. It looks lighter on the camera than it is. And there is all this fog. It's pretty cool. All right, guys, we are at our final spot for this evening. It is so beautiful here. Half of it overlooks like the mountain and the valley and the other half overlooks this gorgeous wind farm, windmill farm, which is so beautiful. Like, I feel like, I don't feel like there are windmill farms in Canada. I'm sure there are, I just don't know where they are. Um, but anyways, it's super gorgeous. Too dark to show you now, but we'll show you in the morning. We're about 14 kilometers out of Abervan, which is where we're going tomorrow. Hopefully, show you by some drone shots. <gasps> Have a good night, guys. It is about 9.30. Ah, we slept so well. This is morning two in the van. And uh, like I said last night, we are in the, just the most beautiful spot. We woke up to the most beautiful views and I want to show you guys. Come on. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. And there's Sean. There's bugs, man. Yeah, there's a lot of bugs. Did you fly the drone at all? Yeah. Did you get some cool stuff? <sighs> oh, do you feel like they're all in you? What? Do you feel like they're all in you? I know they're all in me. Ew. Abervan Memorial was divided into two sections, if you will. The first section is like a memorial to the school, and it is exactly where the, stu where the school stood, and is like a really beautiful garden. 
with some plaques and it's also where the Prince of Wales and where the Queen planted a tree. Then the second section is this graveyard behind me. The graveyard is massive and is the main graveyard for Abervan and another neighboring town as well. But the white uh, domes that you can see behind me, those are everyone specifically involved in the Abervan landslide. We're down by the school and there's a it's just us, it's very empty, it's just us and there's a gentleman there. And he was just kind of sitting on the bench, we didn't really pay much attention to him, he was kind of on the other side. And then he slowly walked towards us and he asked if we were visiting and I said yes and he said have you been to the cemetery yet and we said no, we're going there next. And then he proceeded to tell us how when he was seven, he was in the school when the landslide happened, as was his brother. And he was there when it happened and he survived, as did his brother. But many, many, many of his friends passed away. Um, he showed us, you know, where his classroom was and he showed us um, where his grand lived, you know, like the house, like just down the way and um, how a lot of the houses had been destroyed by the landslide and how there used to be many more along this road that no, that now is just empty. And uh, yeah, he just kind of talked us through the whole experience and he had a very thick Welsh accent so I didn't catch all of it. But um, yeah, it was really touching. van we were like where do we go what do we do we were only about 30 minutes north of Cardiff so we decided to come to Cardiff so that I could check out the capital of Wales we ended up parking in Cardiff Bay which is a beautiful little area by the water and we're gonna park here for the night so now we're just gonna do a loop check out what's around and, uh... the van has more engine problems oh my god the van is killing us we'll talk about it more in detail later but we'll meet another mechanic later as well. But we're gonna try and not let it spoil our, the time that we have in Cardiff in case it gets cut short. I have been told by a few sources that this is one of the nicest theaters in the UK. I mean, look at the entrance, it's gorge. So it's our first night using the gas in the van and it smells really good and it seems to be working well. I'm making turkey burgers, and I have prepared some cheese, avocado, and sun-dried tomatoes as a topping. We're just having something light tonight because we're not super hungry. Morning guys, so we have a very nice view and a less nice view this morning as we wake up in Cardiff Bay. Um, it was a really peaceful night. We walked around the bay a little bit, made some dinner for the first time in the van, which was super nice. Um, and then this morning we decided we had to face reality and accept the challenges we had driving to Cardiff yesterday, which was that a lot of the lights that were originally on came back on, the ESP light, the ABS light, the engine light, and then in about the last 20-30 minutes as we were driving into the city, the brakes, we think it has something to do with the ABS uh, like engaging, the brakes started being really like juddery and making quite an interesting sound every time that Sean pressed them. So this morning we woke up, we walked around a bit, and then we faced the reality that we probably have to fix that. So that's our less nice view, a bright yellow AA van that has come back to our rescue. But the man seems very knowledgeable and seems to know what the problem is, and we are hoping, he's looking at it right now, that uh, he'll be able to fix it roadside and that we can just proceed on to London, because if not, I'm going to have to take the train on my own because I do have to be there tomorrow morning um, for uh, training. So. Hopefully we can proceed today, and I hope this guy can come through for us. We'll keep you posted. So the nice AA man is taking her for a spin. I have no idea if he's taking her for a spin because he thinks he fixed the problem or because he's still trying to diagnose the problem. I really don't know, but Sean is going with him. And I'm gonna stay here and get shots of the bay. It's pretty beautiful. When in Cardiff, you know? Please fix him. We just want to drive Snoopy, please. There he goes. 
I feel like I'm being left behind on my own road trip. <laughs> he looks like he's having a good time. Goodbye. Please come back for me. And that's well, at least I have his car in case, uh, in case they never come back for me, but I don't have the key. Look at this gorgeous view. Cheers, peeps. We had to get a Costa this morning because we had to use their bathroom. All right, guys, the AA mechanic finished looking at the van. He cleared all of the errors that were there and he thinks that the problem was, what was it? ABS sensor. So the ABS sensor on the right side of the driver's wheel was acting up, but he's cleared it. He says we're good to go and he gave us the all clear to drive to London. So we drove around Cardiff a little bit. We didn't get out of the car, but we just like, saw a little bit of the downtown area. And now we are on our way to London and hopefully we will see something cool along the way and maybe stop once or twice to check things out as we move to London. All right.